Konnichiwa. Welcome to Tokyo Television. I am your host, Billy Lee. Tonight, we explore the beautiful country of Chile. The Slender country extends along the coast of South America, 2,400 miles. The most distinctive trait of Chile is its geographical diversity. Let us take a look. The sun rises over the Andes Mountains, bringing a new day to the amazing world of Chile. The great Andes Mountains form a barrier along the entire length of Chile, separating it from Argentina, its neighbor to the east. These beautiful mountains once housed the Incas hundreds of years ago. The deep valleys and jutting peaks account for 80% of Chile's landmass. The rivers that flow down from the snowy peaks are what make the central valley so fertile and the southern regions so lush. Northern Chile is dominated by the arid Atacama Desert. This harsh land, which may appear to have no value, is home to Chile's most important resource, copper, as well as a host of other nitrates and minerals. These resources account for 75% of the nation's gross domestic product. The fertile central valley forms the center of civilization in Chile. Agriculture is the dominating industry in this area. Here they grow wine and table grapes, wheat, corn, beans and fruit. The city of Santiago, nested in the heart of the Central Valley. Pollution is a major problem here, because coastal winds blowing inland in the Andes barrier form a trap and smog remains, having nowhere to go. The metropolis is situated like it is because of the merging of many rivers here, such as the Rappel, Maipo, La Ligua, and the Chopa, making it the heart of the evolving country. Many of the early Spanish settlers created their settlements in this location and for this reason. South of the Central Valley is the lush southern region.
dotted with waterfalls and rivers of great power, and covered with lush greenery and fauna. It is very beautiful here, thriving with life. Thank you for watching our exploration of the fascinating country of Chile. Soon last week, when we visited the exciting world of vampire, Domo Harigoto Sigahara Nara. Coming up next on the Learning Channel, spontaneous vortex creation, back to fantasy. A pictorial history of Chile. Political deadlock prevents me, President Allende, from ruling my country. Now the army is taking over my Marxist government. Now I must die. Uh, you just said the secret word. Die! Die! I hate you! I hate you! Die! Uh, uh. Our new leader, General Pinochet, shall lead us out of economic despair! Yay, yay! Hey guys, Pinochet is nothing but trouble. I am your new commander! Bow down to my corrupted dictatorship! I have infinite power! Pinochet's new constitution and economic reforms will save us! With these plans, Chile will become a dominating force in world trade, and we will control all of these citizens and beat them until they bleed to death. All of their human rights will be violated! Will you be my dominatrix? Told you so, and now it's time for fun. <laughs> the Marxist president Allende could not lead his country into a Marxist future because of political deadlock between parties in Congress. Pinochet's violent military coup spawned a new constitution along with economic reforms that placed Chile in the world marketplace. However, Chile became known for some of the worst cases of authoritarianism in the modern day, and the dictatorship became widely hated for ending Chile's long tradition of democratic politics and for committing numerous violations of human rights. Pero, señor presidente, los personas no like los violations de human rights, so... But the good I've done with me economic reforms overshadow me beating. Anyways, Pinochet lost a plebiscite. A vote for the people, for or against a certain measure, in this case, whether Pinochet should be re-elected, and Chile became a democracy. The reign of terror brought upon them by Pinochet is over, and Eduardo Frey, a democratic president, now oversees Chile's well-being. However, Chile had to endure almost 20 years of dictatorship and oppression. The result was a thriving country. <laughs> but was it worth the risk? You! 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 Be the judge! Be the judge! I am Eduardo Frey, a democratic president, and I am not a crook. I love to eat my gopher cereal in the morning. Gah! <laughs> C-SPAN brings you Republican Newt Gingrich, Speaker of the House, from Marietta, Georgia. How are we doing today, people? Good, good. Hey, Missy, I'll see you tonight. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're all probably wondering why I'm here today. And uh, I'll tell you. See, there's this country in South America that I really like called Chile. Now, when I think of Chile, I think of a nice, long, slender country, quite unlike myself, but, you know, nice, long, and, and slender, and, and with a, a great range of, of geographies and, and, and climates. And n n now, now, this great range enables it to produce such a variety of, of, of foods and fruits and grapes and corn and wheat. All the stuff I just love to eat and eat. I just, I, I just can't get enough of chili. Just can't get enough. But um, 
it's able to do this now. You know, we're able to get our, our grapes and our, and our corn and the other stuff I mentioned. We, we can get that because Chile is now a leading export nation. But it was not always this way. It wasn't until the e economic reforms that the military government of the mid-1970s began instituting that Chile opened up the international market. Now, three main developments can be noted. First, the share of traditional money exports showed a clear downward trend. Second, there was a significant increase in the shares of the agricultural and manufacturing sectors. Third, an increasing proportion of manufacturing exports were going to industrial countries. Now, these economic reforms were the most important contribution by the military junta to Chile's well-being. The primary reason for the staging of the coup was because Chile was in economic paralyzation. This was because the current constitution was inherently flawed and the political party system so fragmented that legislation could not save the country. Now, the policy that, that was most important was the trade policy. Now, starting in 1974, Chile adopted an open trade regime characterized by low import tariffs, a lack of exchange or trade controls, and minimum restrictions on capital movements. Starting in 1979, Chile's trade policy became highly liberalized. By 1990, Chile was the only country, according to the World Bank, whose index of liberalization reached the maximum possible level of 20. With Chile now possessing the ability to trade easily with the international market, their great resources could now be benefit them many times over. And we can get table grapes and, and wine grapes and, and all that stuff I just love to eat and eat and eat. A major policy objective of the military regime was the modernization of the banking sector. Until 1973, the domestic capital market had been highly repressed, with most banks being government-owned. Real interest rates were negative. The liberalization process began slowly in, in early 1974 with the sale of banks back to the private sector, the freeing of interest rates, and the creation of new financial institutions. The opening up of the capital account resulted in massive inflow of foreign capital, including us. From 1979 to 1981, capital inflows doubled twice and came to 4.5 billion U.S. dollars. And this capital gave Chile's economy a jump start and enabled it to begin producing on a global scale, which would rank it high among the industrialized nations. And, and, and that's basically what I want to tell you people, because people look at me and they say, Chile? 